party. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has said only Awamali could register a smooth journey of Bangladesh as the developing country in 2026 and as a developed country by 2041. She said this while delivering introductory speech at the Central Working Committee meeting of Awami League at her official residence, Kono Bhavan. The Prime Minister also mentioned that the 2024 election was the most fair one in the history of Bangladesh. Sheikh Hasina said that today's Bangladesh is a changed Bangladesh. She also said that BNP and its allies do not like this advancement of the country. She vowed to advance the country further in the coming days, defying all obstacles from the enemies. The Prime Minister also came down heavily on America for its action against university students and teachers for protesting genocide in Palestine by Israel. Palestine এই ইসরায়েলের গণহত্যার বিরুদ্ধে আমেরিকার বিভিন্ন বিশ্ববিদ্যালয়ের ছাত্র শিক্ষকরা আন্দোলন করছে আন্দোলন করাকালীন সময় একজন মহিলা প্রফেসর সে বলছে আমি প্রফেসর ইউনিভার্সিটির পুলিশ তাকে যেভাবে দাপর দিয়ে ধরে হাত ধরে পিঠ মোড়া দিয়ে মাটিতে ফেলে হাঁটু দিয়ে তার উপর চেপে তাকে যেভাবে অ্যারেস্ট করেছে এবং সেখানে ছাত্র শিক্ষক তাদের হাতে লাঠিও ছিল না আগুনও ছিল না তার কিন্তু পুলিশে ছিল না তারপরও আমেরিকার পুলিশ যে আচরণটা করেছে ওদেশে যে মানবাধিকার কতটুকু আছে সেটাই তো প্রশ্ন বাংলাদেশের উপর মানবাধিকারের রিপোর্ট লাগে নিজেরা আয়নায় চেহারাটা দেখে না এটাই হচ্ছে বাস্তব কথা আমাদের বাঙালি পরপর কতজন মারা গেছে সেদিনও দুইজন বাঙালিকে নির্মমভাবে হত্যা করেছে আমরা প্রতিবাদ জানাই আমি সেই জবাব চাই সেই মানবাধিকার সংস্থা জাস্টিস ডিপার্টমেন্ট বা যারা আমাদের স্যাংশন দেয় যারা আমাদের উপরে খবরদারি করে তাদের কাছে আমার জবাব চাই আমি যে আমার বাঙালি কেন মারা যাবে ওরকম ছোট্ট একটা অপ্রাপ্ত বয়স্ক শিশু মায়ের কোল থেকে নিয়ে তাকে গুলি করে হত্যা করা প্রফেসরদের উপরে এরকম জুলুম করা মহিলা প্রফেসর তাকে মাটিতে ফেলে পুলিশ যেভাবে পা দিয়ে পা দিয়ে তার হাতে হ্যান্ডকাপ পরিয়েছে এর জবাব আমরা চাই এটা তো সম্পূর্ণ মানবাধিকার লঙ্ঘন করা President Mohammad Shahbuddin urged the political parties to avoid such programs that hinder the development and progress of the country and increase the suffering of the people. The president made the call while addressing a function marking the 24th anniversary of the community clinic at Osmani Memorial Auditorium in the capital today. The president said that the establishment of the community clinic to ensure the health care of the country's marginalized people is a landmark step of Bongo Bondhu's daughter, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. He said community clinics have become places of trust to the marginalized people, especially women and children. Criticizing the vindictive and anti-public decisions of the then government to stop this initiative after 2001, President Mohammad Shahbuddin said that public interest should be given priority in all decisions of the government and politicians. Noting that the government is working relentlessly to build a hunger and poverty-free developed smart Bangladesh, the president called upon everyone, regardless of party affiliation, to work together in order to make all the government's initiatives success. সরকার নিল সেটি বড় কথা নয় বড় কথা হচ্ছে সিদ্ধান্তটি জনস্বার্থ সংরক্ষিত হচ্ছে কি না তা বিবেচনায় নিতে হবে দেশের উন্নয়ন অগ্রগতি বাধাগ্রস্ত হয় এবং জনগণের ভোগান্তি বাড়ে এ ধরনের কর্মসূচি পরিহারের জন্য আমি সেই সকল জনস্বার্থ বিরোধী সেই দলসমূহ বা গোষ্ঠীসমূহকে আহ্বান জানাই যে এই ধরনের কর্মসূচি থেকে 
The function was also addressed by Health and Family Welfare Minister Dr. Shamunto Lal Shen, Chairman of Community Clinic, Health Support Trustee Board Professor Dr. Soed Madasar Ali, Secretary of Health Services Division Mohammad Jahangir Alam, Managing Director of Community Clinic Health Support Trustee AKM Nurun Nobi Kabir, and Line Director of Community Based Healthcare Dr. Mohammad Kayun Talukdar. Prime Minister's Personal Physician, Emeritus Professor Dr. A.B.M. Abdullah, Member of Community Clinic, Health Support Trustee Dr. Ahmed Al-Kabir and Director of Sheikh Fazilutun Nisa Mujib Eye Hospital and Training Center of Gopal Ganj, Dr. Nahid Ferdosi were awarded with the Sheikh Hasina Initiative Gold Medal for their special contribution to the establishment of community clinics. The ongoing heat wave continues to disrupt the lives of common people across the country as the temperature is still largely unbearable. According to Bangladesh Meteorological Department, some parts of the country might see rainfall after May 2nd. Officials of the Meteorological Department and meteorologists say the duration of the heat wave in May will not last long unlike that of April. Meteorologist Shahinul Islam said the temperature might come down across the country including Dhaka, Rashai and Chuadanga on May 4th and 5th onwards due to heavy rainfall. The time of the 5th round heat alert will end at 9 in the morning tomorrow. However, there is a possibility of issuing another round of heat alert. The temperature might increase further in the middle of May. The mercury has so far risen to 43 degrees Celsius in Bangladesh, the highest in this season. Education Minister Mohibul Hassan Choudhury warned that action will be taken against those defying government orders by keeping schools open despite the scorching heat. The minister issued the warning during a press briefing at the Secretariat today. The Ministry of Education has taken decisive action in response to the prevailing heat wave ordering the closure of all educational institutions under its jurisdiction. The educational institutions were shut down in five districts including Dhaka yesterday and in 27 districts across the country today. The High Court yesterday ordered the closure of educational institutions nationwide until May 2nd due to the ongoing heat wave. In response, Education Minister Mohibul Hassan Choudhury has affirmed the government's commitment to showing respect to the court's decision. The minister said that the government has been in close coordination with the Directorate of Meteorology and Directorate of Health to provide guidance on educational activities in different regions. He emphasized that the minister respects the court's decision and will uphold it pending any appeal. Following the severe heat wave, the Awami League today started distributing pure drinking water and packet saline among the thirsty common people to quench their thirst. Defying the scorching heat, leaders and activists of the party distributed bottles of drinking water and packets of saline among the people of working class as well as common people at six ports in capital, namely Chikatola, Motijil. Bongobondo Avenue, Mirpur 10, Gulshan and Nutun Bazar. The Relief and Social Welfare Subcommittee of the Awami League came up with the initiative. Common people and the working class greeted the initiative. Leaders of the party who took part in the program said the Awami League, one of the largest political parties in the subcontinent, always stood by the people and will continue it under the leadership of Bongobondo's daughter, Sheikh Hasina. The activities of the distributing pure water and saline will continue every day till May 2nd between 11 in the morning and 3 in the afternoon. Speaker Dr. Shirin Sharmin Chaudhary witnessed the Maharat ceremony of the film Shema Kabbo at Bangladesh Film Archive in Dhaka today. Chief Whip Nure Alam Chaudhary, former member of parliament Shuburna Mustafa, and speaker spouse, eminent pharmaceutical expert Soed Ishtiak Hussein were present on the occasion. 
Speaker Dr. Shirin Sharmin Chaudhary wished success of the film Shema Kabbo produced with the grant of the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. The psychological thriller film Shema Kabbo has been produced by Shubhana Mosafa and Badrul Anam Saud. Bodhrul Anam Saud wrote the story, dialogue and screenplay of the film while Iman Shah directed the music. Lead artist Nilanjana Nila and Soel Mondol along with Intekhab Dinar, Noreen Hassan Khan Jenny, Shubhashish Bhoumik, Shaju Khadem, guests, dignitaries and media personnel were present on the occasion. Foreign Minister Dr. Hassan Mahmoud has said the role of the European Union EU is very important in the development and progress of the country. He said Bangladesh is working with the EU for partnership on knowledge, skills development, innovation and employment. The foreign minister was addressing a function organized by Bangladesh Embassy in Brussels on Monday evening on the occasion of the Independence and National Day. Foreign Minister Dr. Hassan Mahmoud said Bangladesh should graduate to a developing country from the least developed country by 2026 under the dynamic and visionary leadership of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. He said Bangladesh is working closely with the EU to ensure peace and development for future generations and uphold humanitarian values around the world. Members of the European Parliament, ambassadors, diplomats, officials from the Belgian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, different organizations of the European Union and members of Bangladesh community living in Belgium and Luxembourg attended the event. State Minister for Information and Broadcasting Mohammad Ali Arafat has called up and government officials to fulfill their duties with honesty, dedication, talent and hard work for the betterment of the country and professionalism. He made this call during a meeting with 40 newly appointed officers of the 41st BCS Information Cadre at the Ministry of Information today. The State Minister stressed that there should be no compromise when it comes to the interests of Bangladesh, urging officials to prioritize national interests above all. Furthermore, the State Minister underlined the significance of unwavering loyalty to the state and its people among government officials. <laughs> এই সংগাই এই দেশের সংগা হবে এটা আমি বিশ্বাস করি ও সেই সংগার উপরে দাঁড়িয়ে আমাদের অটল থাকতে হবে এর বাইরে যদি আমরা কোনো কিছু কেউ চিন্তা করে তারা এই দেশের বিরোধী এবং দেশের দ্রোহী বলে আমি মনে করি কাজেই এই মূল জায়গাতে বাংলাদেশ প্রশ্নে বাংলাদেশের জন্মের প্রশ্নে এখানে কোনো কম্প্রোমাইজ করা যাবে না এবং এটিকে আমি দলীয় রাজনীতির ঊর্ধ্বে চিন্তা করতে চাই Senior Secretary of the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, Mohammad Humayn Kabir, also attended the meeting. Prime Minister's Principal Secretary, M. Tofazal Hossein Mia, has told the foreign diplomats that delay in repatriation of the Rohingyas to their homeland in the Rakhine state of Myanmar would become a threat to regional security. The Principal Secretary said this when the foreign diplomats and representatives from different countries and international agencies in Dhaka attended a meeting over the Rohingya issue at the Prime Minister's office today. During the meeting, they discussed the solution to the Rohingya crisis, the repatriation of the forcibly displaced Myanmar Rohingyas who took shelter in Bangladesh on a temporary basis, the negative impact on the local community and their employment generation, the humanitarian assistance from international community for the Rohingya people and their skills enhancement. Tofazul Hossein Mia said the main goal of the Bangladesh government is to repatriate the Rohingyas to their own country. He attached special importance to the role of the international community including the United Nations in the quick and permanent solution to this issue. The ambassadors and high commissioners pledged to continue their government's efforts to resolve the Rohingya crisis. 
High Commissioner of Canada Lily Nichols, Ambassador of Japan Iwama Kiminori, Acting High Commissioner of United Kingdom Matt Cannell, Acting High Commissioner of Australia Nerdia Simpson, UNHCR Country Representative Sumbul Rizvi, BRAC Executive Director Asif Saleh, and Head of Organization at UNRC Office Louise Berber were present among the foreign diplomats and representatives. Now, international news. Israeli air and drone attack. people in Gaza City bringing the number of people killed in Gaza on Monday to at least 34, the Wafa News Agency reports. The report comes as the U.S. and U.K. urge Palestinians to accept an Israeli offer of a 40-day pause in fighting over demands for a permanent ceasefire in Gaza. Meanwhile, the U.S. Secretary of State hopes Hamas will accept what he has called Israel's extraordinarily generous offer for a Gaza truce and hostage release deal. Antony Blinken was speaking as the Hamas delegation discussed the new proposal with mediators from Egypt and Qatar. The proposal includes a 40-day truce in return for the release of hostages and the prospect of displaced families being allowed back to northern Gaza. A U.S. State Department spokesperson says the International Criminal Court, ICC, has no jurisdiction over Israel as hardline Israeli ministers say they will quit Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government if he agrees to a truce in return for captives. In another development, the U.S. State Department has found five units of the Israeli military responsible for gross violations of human rights in individual incidents, but says they will continue to receive U.S. military backing. Rival Palestinian groups Fatah and Hamas have met in China for talks on potential reconciliation. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Beijing confirmed on Monday that the group's representatives had met recently. The groups have competed for years, but the Israeli war on the Gaza Strip has provoked further talks on Palestinian reconciliation. The two groups visited China to partake in an in-depth and candid dialogue on the prospect foreign ministry spokesperson Lin Jian said he did not specify when the meeting took place. Representatives from the two groups as well as other political factions met in Moscow earlier this year to discuss the potential formation of a unified Palestinian government. Students at top universities who are staging pro-Palestine protests amid Israel's war on Gaza inspired by their American counterparts. Students of the sciences, Po University in Paris occupied parts of the institution and blocked entry to a building last week before riot police descended on campus. On Saturday, Prime Minister Gabriel Attal, who, like President Emmanuel Macron, is among the university's notable alumni, said his government would not tolerate the actions of a dangerously acting minority trying to impose its rules and ideology coming from North America following the three-day blockade at the prestigious school. Away in the U.S., the number of the student protesters arrested throughout the U.S. has surpassed 900 since New York police removed a pro-Palestinian protest encampment at Columbia University and arrested more than 100 demonstrators on April 18th, the Associated Press reports. The hush money trial has held the former United States president in contempt of court for repeatedly violating a gag order. The order prohibited Trump from speaking publicly and posting on social media about individuals involved in the trial. The judge, Juan Merchant, on Tuesday said Trump had violated the order nine times. He fined Trump $1,000 each for nine specific violations of the gag order for a total of $9,000. Prosecutors had detailed 14 possible violations to the court and Merchant could make more determinations at a hearing on Thursday. The decisions came as Trump's criminal trial entered its third week with witness testimony continuing on Tuesday. 
About 50 people have died in Kenya in deluge following heavy rains and flooding, a Red Cross official has said. Rescue efforts are continuing to pull people out of the mud with fears that the death toll could rise. More than 100 people have been killed in floods that have devastated parts of Kenya in the last month. The historic May Day tomorrow. The day is being observed across the globe since 1886, commemorating the supreme sacrifices of the workers at Hay Market, Chicago, in the USA for eight-hour working day and upholding the rights of the working people. This year's theme of the day in the country is Somik Mali Gorbo Desh, Smart Hobby Bangladesh. President Mohammad Shahbuddin and Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina in separate messages extended greetings to all working people of the world, including Bangladesh, on the eve of the historic May Day. On the occasion of the Great May Day, various organizations The programs include workers' rallies, processions, discussions, seminars, and cultural functions. National newspapers will publish special supplements marking the day. Bangladesh Television, Bangladesh Better, and private TV channels will broadcast special programs and talk shows. The Ministry of Labor and Employment has organized a discussion meeting at Bongo Bondu International Conference Center in the capital at 11 a.m. tomorrow. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina will address the event as the chief guest. Jatiyo Sromik League will organize a workers' rally in front of the central office of Awami League on Bongobundu Avenue in Dhaka at 3 p.m. tomorrow. Now, news on sports. Real Madrid and Bayern Munich will meet each other in the first leg of the UEFA Champions League semi-finals tonight. The match will start at 1 a.m. Bangladesh Standard Time at Allianz Arena in Germany. Real Madrid will play in the semi-finals for the 33rd time while Bayern will be 21st. To end the bulletin, headlines once again. When in power, Awam League works for the welfare of the people, says Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. At when in power, Awam League works for the welfare of the people, says Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina at a meeting of the party's Central Executive Committee at Gonobobon. President Shahbuddin urges the political parties to shun programs that hampered the country's development and progress and increase people's sufferings. Intense heat wave continues across the country. Rainfall likely after May 2nd, country's highest temperature 43.8 degrees Celsius recorded in Joshua today. Bangladesh Shawami League starts distributing water and oral saline, bringing relief to the common people in the extreme heat wave. A meeting with the envoys at the Prime Minister's office emphasizes on strong role of the international community in resolving Rohingya crisis. Another 34 Palestinians were killed by Israeli forces in Gaza as the USA and UK urged the Palestinians to accept Israel's ceasefire proposal. And Real Madrid to face Bayern Munich, the first leg of the UEFA Champions League semi final. And that's all from the newsroom for the moment. Thank you for staying with us. And we also invite you to watch our 11.30 Bangla News. Until then, Kudahaf.